This week on Indie News, I try out two monitor slash recorders from Atomos, the 7-inch Shogun 7 and the 5-inch Ninja 5. Why is the Ninja half the price, and why would you ever need a dedicated recording monitor hooked up to your camera? Hey Indie Mogulers, Griffin here. So Atomos gave me two of their latest products to test out, and I'll say right off the bat that the primary two reasons for using products like this are also the big two reasons why I am not the ideal customer customer for products like this. Number one, it is a nice big monitor, much bigger than what's on my camera. But I'm someone who likes to travel light and I don't wanna bring redundant gear. So if I already have an LCD panel on my camera, maybe I don't want to bring an extra monitor with me. Number two, recorders like this can record higher quality than my camera can do internally. But I'm also someone that believes that fundamental filmmaking techniques like lighting has a much bigger impact on the image quality than what bitrate you're shooting with. You could shoot in compressed H.264 or you could shoot Apple ProRes RAW and your audience will never know the difference. Unless your audience is a bunch of Atomos engineers. So with the disclaimer that not every filmmaker needs one of these, I will share my experience shooting with them and explain a few features like false color, how many nits are in these displays, and what recording modes you can shoot in and why you might choose them. First, what do both the $1,500 Shogun and $700 Ninja have in common? They're each a 1920 by 1080 display powered by AC or battery with a slot for an SSD, a solid state drive. They each have an HDMI in to plug in your camera and an HDMI out so you can daisy chain multiple monitors, plus quarter 20 tripod screws on the top and bottom for mounting. Each device records 4K video to the attached drive. So you might ask, why aren't the displays 4K? These are 1080 displays. But you and I both know non-filmmakers who can barely tell the difference between 4K and 1080 on a 65 inch screen. These are seven and five inch screens. So cramming in more resolution wouldn't make much of a difference on such a relatively small screen. Aside from the larger screen, the Shogun adds a second battery slot, and once Atomos updates the firmware, they promise this device will do multicam switching with all these SDI inputs. The Shogun is also a brighter screen than the Ninja. Atomos says it is 1500 nits, the Ninja is 1000 nits. So what is a nit? One nit equals a candela per square meter. That is not helpful for me. A nit is a measure of brightness. You've also heard of lumens. Lumens describes brightness when we're talking about thrown light, like filmmaking lights or a projector. And nits are used for light we look at, like a monitor or display. 1500 nits is more than twice as bright as my iPhone screen, and it's about the minimum you need to use a screen like this outside. A brighter screen is also important for viewing HDR video. The brighter you can get, the greater contrast there is between the highlights and shadows. So the Shogun has a dynamic range of 15 stops versus 10 on the Ninja. To get started with an Atomos recorder, there are three things I need to buy first. An SSD drive, an HDMI cable, and a battery. Each recorder comes with an AC cable, but if you want to go portable, you'll need an NPF or Sony style L series battery. And neither one of these devices can charge a battery. So you'll also need a battery charger. And you'll want an HDMI 2.0 cable, which is fast enough to handle 4K 60p recording. Some of the display features are similar to what I already have in camera. There's a waveform for setting exposure. There are zebra stripes, which shows me that this little highlight here is overexposed. That's fine. And there's focus peaking, which highlights highlights which part of my image is in focus. But the Atomos features are a lot more customizable than what's in my camera. For example, I always think the color of focus peaking makes a color image look really strange. I actually worry that people think my image is off when they look over my shoulder. So I like that you can turn off the image entirely or go black and white, which I like for just flipping in and out of focus peaking. You can also load LUTs onto the device from the SSD so I can record a flat log color profile from my camera 
but tell the monitor to show me what it'll look like once the LUT is applied. And my favorite feature that I definitely cannot do in camera is false color. False color is another visual method for setting exposure. Instead of showing the real colors in your image, the monitor replaces them with a set of colors that each represent a brightness value. The scale is over here on the left. Red is completely overexposed, over 100% brightness. Those details are lost. Purple at the bottom is completely underexposed, under 0%. Those details are lost. So the important parts of your image should not fall into those colors. Skin tones are often set to 70% brightness, or in this case, light gray. So with false color, I can quickly check to see if the skin tones are properly exposed and then scan the rest of my image to make sure I'm not way too overexposed or underexposed in the important areas and then flip back to my normal color display. Now that I'm ready to record, I can choose which format to write to the drive. And this is the primary reason to use an external recorder. While my camera is mostly limited to one format, the Atomos gives me options that are 10 or 20 times larger files. These larger files can hold more color data, less compression, and they can be less processor intensive. So even though they take up more space on a drive, your computer may have an easier time editing them. I primarily use ProRes, which is an Apple codec. There's also DNX HD and HR, which is an Avid codec. And for RAW, there's Cinema DNG and the new Apple ProRes RAW. But my camera doesn't output RAW, so that's not useful for me yet. So there's a few reasons to record to a hard drive. One might be to simply back up what's happening on the camera so I don't lose any data. You could record different codecs. Maybe I upload the smaller files from my camera to get them to my editor right away across the country while he waits for the hard drive to show up with the higher quality files. Or if I'm working with a colorist and I wanna squeeze the absolute highest quality I can out of this camera, this device will let me record 4K 60p at 10-bit 422 color. But again, the disclaimer, not every project needs that and your audience won't be able to tell the difference. So do it for you, not for them. As much as I don't like to travel with too much gear, it was helpful on my latest assignment to view the interview on a larger screen. And once I got to editing on my laptop, I actually used the Shogun as an editing monitor. Oh, and when I record indie news, now I have a better way to see myself. Rather than using the Wi-Fi in my camera to send it to my phone, this is a little bit more reliable. I actually picked up a remote so now I can start and stop recording from here and see myself right here. As always, thank you so much for watching Indie News and let me know in the comments what questions you have and maybe I'll tackle them in a future episode. If you like educational and entertaining filmmaking content like this, be sure to subscribe to Indie Mogul. Thanks and see you next week.